Hi there, Ken here from the Eco Innovation Workshop. The purpose of this video is to show you how you can change out the bearings in the Power Spot bearing block from the Power Spot turbine. Uh, refer to our manual, our online manual for change out intervals. Although it's a sort of job that's possible to do out in the field with the turbine, we recommend that you bring the, um, the bearing block once removed into a, a working environment that's more comfortable, helpful to have a vise. I've got a, a block of metal down here, a block of steel, uh, and therefore the whole process is simpler. And in fact, a lot of our customers are buying a separate bearing block and shaft assembly. So when it's change out time, they'll walk out into the um, into the location of the turbine and make the change out quite simply out there, bring the block back and make that change out in a, in a comfortable environment. The first step to removing the shaft from the bearing block is to remove the lock nut off the generator end of the shaft. And although it's possible to do this with a pair of grips or pliers, I prefer to just pinch it in the vise and then take a pair of grips on the other end and just loosen that off till it turns, then you can undo it by hand. The nut was originally locked in place with a bit of retaining compound. So there's the nut off. And the next step is to push the shaft out. Ideally, you might use a small press in a workshop, although I'll use the, um, the vise and a hammer. And note that the shaft itself, the end that you'll be hitting, is reduced and clear of the thread, designed for the purpose of of pushing it out. So I'll put that in the other end of the vise. We're not concerned about damage to the bearings because in fact we're here to change the bearings out. So we continue to Okay, so the shaft has come out with that large bottom bearing. Note that I haven't used the vise to actually grip the shaft. I'm just using the vise to support the block as I hammer the shaft out. So the next step we'll do is we'll remove that top bearing or that large bearing, it's not the top bearing, off in the same way using the vise, not to grip the shaft, just to support the bearing while I hammer on that end. There, so the, that large bearing is now off the shaft, and now's the time to have a look at that shaft and see how clean the, um, the journals are on it, or the, the surfaces that the bearings are, are, are gripping on. And they look clean. If they were dirty, or not dirty, but any corrosion on there, or um, any, uh, any of the, the retaining compound had excessively stuck on there, then I'd go to, in, in the workshop, I'd go to a, a wire wheel, a powered wire wheel. You could easily use um, a wire brush. Just keep those clean and lay that shaft aside. The next step will be the removal of the, um, the generator side bearing which is still in the bearing block. Right, well we still need to remove the generator side bearing out of the bearing block. And although it's possible to do this in the field with, well, a punch even made out of an old galvanized bolt like this, bang. Uh, I prefer not to do that in the workshop. I do quite a lot of these and it's a bit hard on the hands. So once again, I'll use the vise to support the bearing block while I just knock that bearing out of there considering that I'm not concerned about damaging the bearing in this stage. Um, we're replacing it. Right, that's that um, generator side bearing out. The next step is to um, inspect the housings of the bearing. You can do that with your finger and visually grab a rag and just give them a clean. If they're not clean, take your old bearings Put them in your scrap metal well away from the new bearings that you've um, taken out of the boxes or bags so you don't confuse the two. And that's our next step, putting in the new bearings. Now it's time to put the bearings or the new bearings into the bearing block. Um, when you buy a power spot, you get a, a set of spare bearings for emergency use only. They're of a lower quality. We recommend uh, a high quality bearing, um, preferably ones with steel sleeves rather than the, um, the rubber aluminium. They're a low friction, high quality bearing as were originally fitted. So let's put those bearings in now. I'm using a, a slab of steel on the bench, which is my favorite way of, of tapping them in. Um, if you've got access to a press, by all means, use a press. So I'll put the bearing block down with the smaller housing, the generator side housing, up top. And I'll grab that bearing. Um, it's 
there's no one side um, that needs to go down there. It's, so I'll put that on there. And I'm going to be tapping with the hammer only on the outside ring or race of the bearing. I don't want to hit the inner end and cause any damage to the bearing. I want to tap it evenly around. I can hear when the bearing is fully seated. Give the bearing a spin. Make sure there's no what they call bearing crush on there, but there shouldn't be. And now I'll turn that around. And this time I'm putting the larger bearing, which doesn't protrude, it goes deeper. So I'll start that by hand. And for this job, I recommend using a punch that's got a, a nice sharp square end on it so that you don't slip off and, and damage the other part of the bearing, making sure you're only hitting the outer ring or race of that bearing. There, it's fully in. I can hear when it's fully in. But just to check, I'm going to have a good look at that as I s just slowly rotate it. I can see the, um, the outer edge of the bearing block and the, and the edge of the, the bearing. I can see that it's, it's concentric in there, it's square in. The next step is to clean the inner surfaces of the bearings before we put any of the retaining compounds such as Loctite on them. And what I prefer to use is a clean rag and some methylated spirits. Just a quick wipe on there. It'll only take seconds to dry. There it is. And the next step is to put on the, the retaining fluid, the, um, such as Loctite. Uh, we're using one which is rated for bearings, that's what we recommend. And it's important not to use too much. Uh, too much of this kind of fluid will actually make its way into the bearing and cause it to, um, to run roughly and, and destroy it, in fact. So it's about using a couple of droplets. Uh, it's also important to, um, to spread it. So a couple of droplets on the outer, or what I call the outer bearing, but it's really the generator side bearing, the small one. Now, I won't put the retaining fluid on the other bearing. If I did that and push the shaft in, then the, the journal for the first bearing would wipe it off on its way to its back position. So what I'll do is I'll leave the Loctite on that generator side bearing, then I'll pick up the shaft. So I'll apply some of the retaining fluid to the journal, which is furthest away from the generator side. Just a small amount and then use the tip to spread that a bit. And that's fine. There it is. Right, so the Loctite's been applied, or the retaining compound is applied. We now need to put the shaft in. I would also use, or if you have, I would recommend using a press, but in this case I'll use a vise. And what's important is to, um, is to protect the inner race um, while you do this, the inner ring of the bearing. And so I'll use the vise, I'll lay, I'll put the um, bearing block on top of the vise with the, be uh, the protruding bearing or the generator side bearing down. And I'll just look down the inside as I close the vise and make sure that I don't over close it, but that the bearing is in fact the, the inner ring is supported. Then I'll take the shaft with the generator side or the side that's got or the end that's got the spline and the external thread and I'll place that in, feed that in through that first bearing. Now I'm going to grab a pair of safety glasses and instead of a, a steel faced hammer I'll grab a, a soft faced hammer on the plastic end so I don't damage the flat threaded end, the, the pelt and runner end and I'll knock that shaft in I can hear when it's fully home. I can see the threads protruding where the lock nut will go on. Then I'll take that lock nut and thread it on to that end thread and finger tighten it. Now 
Okay, that's finger tight, but like we started this procedure, I'll put that nut and tighten it in the vise. So I take a pair of grips and I apply some torque to the shaft just to snug it up. And you can tell if you've got it right, you give it a spin, make sure it's spinning freely and smoothly. And you know you've done a good job. That's how you change the bearings. Hope you find that helpful.